Hey guys, your electronics fanatic here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Mastec HY1803DL. This is the one that I did the unboxing for uh, a week or so ago, but uh, I've taken some time and uh, tested it a bit here on different uh, loads and, and whatnot, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and, and do an official review of you know, what my thoughts were on it and uh, share it with you guys. and you know, let you guys come to a conclusion on yourself on whether, you know, this is something that you'd want to buy or not. So, uh, as you can see here, let me grab the camera here a little bit, get a little bit better picture here of what's going on. Um, as you can see, uh, this one has uh, some lights on the back of the LCD there uh, so that you can see it uh, during the dark. It really helps in displaying the picture, as you can see there. It gives it a good view. If, you know, if you're working in a in a uh, environment where it's kind of dark, you're you don't you don't have a whole bu whole bunch of lights on that kind of thing. So uh, that's kind of nifty. And then obviously you got the light switch there, uh, letting you know that it's on. And then your your positive and negative connectors there. So uh, that's pretty nice. And then uh, as the uh, AC or AC the uh, the current right there and it's not going to do anything because it, it, for, for you to use this one you actually have to hook it up to a load in order to be able to uh, you know see what the, the current is of, of it right there so it's not going to do anything and I'll show you that in just a sec here and then uh, you got your voltage and uh, it's really sensitive one thing that I found with using it uh, is it's really sensitive to uh, moving you just have to barely touch it there to get it to the fine tuning that you want, if you want to 1.5, so I'm just barely touching that. Get it back down to four. So yeah, I just barely moved that. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, maybe for some of you guys, you know, you might not like that uh, when you're trying to fine tune it. You kind of got to mess with it for a sec. Say I want to get to 1.5. You know, you got to uh, really uh, just barely touch the knob there until you can get it to where you want. So. Uh, whether that's going to be annoying to you or not, I don't know. But uh, for me personally, it's not that big of a deal. I don't really care, especially for the price range that you're paying for this. Uh, you know, I don't really care. Uh, that it, you know, it's just not something that bothers me. So, uh, just wanted to point that out to to some of you guys, and maybe that might be a factor on whether this is something that you get or not. But as we can see here, it goes uh, keeps climbing, and uh, I don't know if you heard that click. Let me uh, go back again here. I think it's around 6 volts, if I remember right. Oh, nope, it's around 9. Yeah, but that's just a relay switch, uh, convert, you know, which is a good thing to have when you're hearing that. So that's one thing to learn uh, with power supplies is getting, you know, those relay switches on there. And when I do the uh, breaking apart of the... Uh, power supply here you know that's something that I'll show you but it does have a relay switch in there which is pretty nice you know it's not something that you really have to have in my opinion on something this size but it's an added, added extra feature so uh, that's pretty nifty and it goes all the way up to 18.7 so that's pretty cool 18.7 volts that's the range there we'll bring it down back down to zero there so, and then the uh, the connectors here, uh, these unscrew, and you can actually get it out here enough. Maybe you can see the hole there. Sorry, trying to move it there where you can see the hole. Let me adjust it here a little bit. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it here for you. The hole on it is somewhat to be desired there. You can kind of see there. It's trying to focus. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. There you go. That is not a very big hole at all, guys. That is dinky. Uh, so if you're going to be using anything, you know, super big for your wire to connect there, you know, it's not going to work on this. Uh, this one, I believe, we'll do like a 20 on the... Uh, you know the size of the wire there, which is uh, 
this one here that I've got. But anything bigger than that, uh, you might be able to get an 18 gauge in there, but I don't, I don't know. You'd have to try that on your own to see if you can get an 18 gauge wire in there. Uh, so that is one uh, other complaint that I've uh, found with using it is the, the size of the, the hole there uh, isn't very big. And I can't show you that one, but trust me, it's the same size as that one there, and it is just not very big at all. So, uh, you know, that's just something to think about, too. But if you're using, uh, you know, a banana connector, which I have here, and I'll show you. You know, it hooks up really easy and and provides a good power uh, supply for, uh, you know, your circuit. And that's what I've got here, and that's what I use. So I'll just plug these in really quick, and then I'll hook it up to the uh, multimeter and uh, let you see how that looks there. But those just plug in nice and snug. You know, they're not coming out at all. They're, they're in there good. And I'm going to connect it to the... Uh, uh -huh. multimeter so I'm going to set the camera back down give me just a sec to connect it here just uh, turn that there a little bit so you guys can see what's going on there and I'll probably have to zoom in here And right now, let's see here, I'm going to pull it up a little bit better. Drag this up a bit more. And according to the uh, paperwork, which I have no idea where I sit, it uh, has a uh, tolerance of uh, 1% uh, accuracy, which as you can see here, it is well within that. And if I... Uh, if I go ahead and just turn the voltage up on that, you'll see how that, uh, you know, correlates with that. So it's, it's definitely within range. It's, you know, it's not super accurate but it, it is within range there just uh, doing some adjustments there just to kind of show you you know it is it is within range And it's gonna be kind of gonna be kind of hard, you know, especially since this is you know just got a, a two-digit uh, accuracy. Well, if if you really consider it's just one within one digit of it here, and uh, you know the multimeter here, you, you know it's got an additional three digits there for you to look at. But it is within you know the the tolerance levels that it says on the uh, paperwork there. So that's pretty nifty. A uh, little. Thing, a bit of information and all just in case some of you guys out there want to know how accurate it is you know and I'm using a fluke 77 here so uh, you know it's definitely within range of the accuracy there so yeah that's a uh, that's one thing though and uh, let me go ahead and just uh, turn this off really quick and and uh, turn this down here And I'm going to switch it over to amps really quick. And we'll just measure the amps on there. And uh, we'll do the load on that there. Get this straightened out here. And. Let's go. And be because this is in milliamps, it's not going to show up here on the uh, 
multimeter at the moment. But once I get up to an amp, it's going to pop up because I have it currently set to uh, amps on this thing. So. Well, guess what? Uh, a big rookie mistake. Check it out. AC. Oh, how rookie am I? Okay, let's switch this over to DC. Oh, dude, you guys don't even know how many times I make that mistake, you know? And that's just something that's going to happen to a lot of you guys that are new. Uh, you're not going to get that reading. So. Just a little bit of information when you're doing your multimeter, make sure you, you got it on the right setting. So let's go ahead and uh, put this down here. Back down. There you go. Just uh, checking the load out on that. So it's uh, definitely within you know the accuracy range on that, which is 1%. So it's definitely falling within. Uh, the parameters that the the paper you know said it would, which is good. That's nice to know. Just uh, testing that out and knowing that it it is within you know the range specified on the packaging. So and uh, this one goes all the way up to three amps, a little over three amps. So that's that's also a nice thing to know. <laughs> I think that's so funny. You know, uh, I do that so many times with that. Uh, Forgetting to switch that over to DC, so a bunch of you guys are gonna laugh at me over that one. But anyway, so the amp on that is uh, definitely within range, so that's another cool thing about it that I, you know, I, I've done with the reviewing of it. So now I did put this under a load, and I put it under a load for uh, 45 minutes, and I did it at 18, you know, the highest it would go, which is. Uh, Let's see, let's disconnect this. I don't want to blow a circuit here. Yeah, 18.7. I put up as high as I could under a load for uh, 45 minutes. And I did notice that uh, during that time that the... Uh, the uh, accuracy of it dropped uh, by 150 millivolts so and you know if you think about it when you when you're putting a linear power supply through a load and it starts to heat up uh, the accuracy of the uh, uh, regulator that you're using especially if it's a lower quality one is gonna uh, you know fluctuate it's not gonna be it's gonna lose its accuracy and that's just due to the you know the power supply heating up and, and other factors involved that way where you know it'll cause it to uh, uh, you know drop or increase in uh, the tolerance levels of it so uh, but that's really if you think about it, 150 millivolts unless you're really doing some type of circuit where you know 150 millivolts makes a difference as far as voltage goes it's not really going to be that big of a deal and I think for, you know, most people that are looking to buy something in this price range, you know, aren't going to be needing anything that specific. And you're just not going to find it with uh, this power supply, uh, you know, especially with the price range that it's in. You're just, uh, you're not going to be able to get it uh, much more accurate than that. And honestly, I, I've been impressed with it so far as far as the accuracy goes of it and everything as far as that goes. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I did do another test on it <coughs> at 5 volts, and I did that for 5, or excuse me, for 15 minutes, and uh, uh, there was no uh, fluctuation in the in the voltage at that range at all. It, it was pretty stable, so that's another uh, quick thing that I wanted to share with you guys as far as, you know, as far as accuracy and uh, the overall ability of the... Uh, power supply to function right you know it it does uh, I, I think especially for the price range that you're getting on uh, uh, you know a power supply like this that it, it's really a pretty good deal it's not you know it's not meant for you know any super uh, applications that maybe an engineer would use or anything like that but I think for the everyday hobbyist this is definitely uh, worth the money and I think you should look into it and and you know see if it's something that you would want 
Um, this is the model number here that uh, you can probably see, uh, HY1803DL. And uh, that's just a quick overview of it. And just with it been sitting here, uh, just with applying the volts that it has at 18.7, it's uh, you know it's not super hot at all or anything like that. It, I would say it's you know lukewarm at the at the most. I don't have a temperature gauge here to to do. And uh, what I did have under the under the load for that uh, you know 45 minutes at the the top 18 volts there, um, it really didn't get hot at all. And uh, you know, it's it's staying cool right now. It's not really hot at all. Uh, the back of the uh, heat sinks here. Let me see if I can switch around. I'm going to turn this off for a sec here. I don't want to shock myself. I'll show you the back side here. The, the, the heat sink. Now, that's a pretty big freaking heat sink that you're getting there. And, uh, you know, I, I would imagine that if you uh, were to hook up you know some type of fan to blow through there that it would be better but uh, I think you know most people aren't gonna have this running very long and you know it's really cool to the touch it's you can feel it's kind of warm but it's you know it's not that big of a deal like I said I had it running for basically an hour and uh, you know it, it stayed really cool to the touch and I did like uh, the vents here uh, how it is pretty well ventilated and uh, you know on the sides here then top and obviously the other side so it is pretty well ventilated and you know it's going to dissipate the heat really well you're not going to get a lot of that heat uh, being uh, trapped inside there and you know causing problems with the your power supply so uh, really overall like I said uh, really great power supply for my I, I would recommend it um, yeah, I still plan on uh, building my own power supply, but uh, I want to do it right. I want to do a good one. Um, so I've just been getting ideas, you know, doing a lot of research on my own and things like that. But um, I've already taken this apart and uh, looked at it and got a few ideas on things that I want to do with my own. And uh, when I do do, you know, the the review of taking this apart here uh, on YouTube for you to see, uh, you'll be able to take a look at it and. Maybe get some ideas of your own on, on things that you can do for your own power supply if that's something that you want to do. I highly recommend you do that because it'll give you, you know, the knowledge that you need to understand how our power supply works and that kind of stuff. So uh, overall, like I said, again, I know I keep rambling here, but uh, it is well worth the money. Uh, I think it was sixty nine seventy five that I paid. You can go look at that video and and see the unboxing and the price that I paid on it somewhere around there. And um, you can pick, pick yourself up one and, and use it, you know, for those of you that uh, don't feel comfortable buying a power supply yet, you don't really know what you need and stuff like that, you can get this one. But uh, it's a good idea to have more than one just for different applications and uh, things that you're wanting to do and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, another thing that I did want to point out really quick, uh, I forgot about here, is... Uh, uh, you know, it doesn't have a, another ground uh, connector here, which I would have liked to have seen. Uh, when I took it apart and looked at it, uh, you know, I, I saw where it was grounded in that, and it's okay, but I really would have liked to have seen an additional uh, connector here. But uh, when you're buying, you know, one uh, yourself and not making it, it's really hard to find ones in the 18 volt range unless, you know, you get into higher quality power supply that's going to have the additional ground uh, front on the front there but uh, like I said I don't expect it to be on, on here for one uh, at this price range and, and that so anyway I uh, thank you guys for watching uh, if you have any questions or comments please uh, go ahead and put them down below or PM me and I, uh, I will put anything I can put out another video if you have any more questions on it so Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.